Hey! Hello! Welcome. Welcome to Designing Adobe XD. Uh, I am so excited. I'm joined today by just one of my favorite people, Mr. Jonathan Pimento. <laughs> uh, first off, he's a designer. I'll just say that up front. But he's also, also a PM on the Adobe XD team. So, uh, and I forgot, uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself first, yes. too. I'm Talon Wadsworth. I'm the lead designer of Adobe XD. Hey, everybody, into the chat. Uh, hey, Matthias. Hayden, how are you guys doing? Uh, join the chat. Say hi to us. Uh, Jonathan, thanks for joining me, man. That was awesome. Um, always love hanging out with you, yeah, man. doing some fun design stuff. What, uh, so I'm excited to show off some of the new tips and tricks we good. have in yeah. store. He's jumping ahead a little bit. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, so you you were a designer. You're now a PM. What do you do on the Adobe XD team now? So a large part of my focus on the XD team is sort of leading the effort around prototyping. Yeah. Uh, some of the new features, the work we are undertaking on that front. Yeah. Um, also sort of seeding some of the design systems investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so a lot of focus on like the assets panel, um, more complex symbol workflows. Um, and then yeah, sort of, you know, also deep diving a little bit into design as well. Yeah, every yeah, now and yeah. then. Dude, I, I guess say the assets panel is my favorite feature in XD. I, I like, and I think what I'm really excited about today, and Jonathan mentioned it today, we are actually going to keep this pretty loose, pretty informal. We're going to be talking about some of our favorite tips and mm -hmm. tricks in using XD. Again, because I think we use, we, it's safe to say that at this moment, we probably have used XD the longest. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like as a designers and as a team more broadly. So we, we kind of know the ins and outs. So today we're gonna give you a little, maybe a little in-depth dive, little, maybe some things you don't know. Yeah. Uh, how have we come to use XD? <laughs> Matthias already, we can always talk about rulers. I don't know, Jonathan is not, actually the PM for rulers, so I'm sure he has some opinions, though, about rulers and guides, <laughs> as we all do. Um, hey, Jeff, hey, Ahmed, thanks for joining us. Uh, but yeah, we're going to share some of our insights, some of the ways that we like to work in XD, because I think it's sometimes hard when you like come into an application and you're learning it for the first time to know but like what the what, what you can really yes. do. And of course, XD is very simple, right? Like it's very, um, it's a very focused UI. It's a very, like there's not, it's not really like it's like, not it's, overloaded. Yeah, we, like there's no UI for yeah, every specific yeah. workflow. Right. So how do you get in there and how do you start, you know, learning what what XD can really do for you, right? Exactly. Ah, there's Glaren. Ah, so, there, there he is. Go. There is uh, <laughs> Glaren showing up. Also, everyone in the chat, you should know Glaren. Uh, uh, first off, he's, he he plays the bagpipes. He's a he's a professional bagpipe <laughs> player. So if you have any bagpipe related questions, he's your guy. Uh, but he's also one of our senior designers on the team as well. So joining us in the chat today, we like seeing that. And he worked on the assets. And panel. he worked on the assets panel again. Jonathan is was the product manager, and Glaren was the design uh, collaborator, the masterminds behind the assets yep. panel. So if you have any questions related to that, let us know. Like I said, it's my favorite feature. I I I, I work with it open, and it's like the only thing. It's like the constant in my yeah. life is the assets panel. How, what what how, what do you think about the assets panel? I think it's the it's one of those few features where you're going to see a lot of investment yeah. over the next couple of years, right? It's never done. Yeah. A feature like the yeah. assets panel always has to constantly always, evolve, always cool. has to adapt yeah. to you know new requirements. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see where we take this panel. Like a large part of our focus has been on design, with yeah. colors, yeah. character styles, and yep. symbols. I think XD is one of those unique apps which is positioned with design and prototyping. Mm -hmm. So thinking about what an assets panel for prototyping would mean in the future oh, would yeah. is is really exciting. That's pretty good. That's um, pretty so yeah, all I can say cool is there's there's definitely a lot of there's a lot of new areas we can explore with yeah. this. Um, so yeah, this will never be done. It'll always be evolving. I you know like we actually just launched some new features for it. Yeah. What it so again like the. And if you didn't know everyone, everyone, hey, everyone, hi, Bruno and Colby. It's great to see you guys here. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, again, like one of the cool things about, I think, our team and our on XD is that we re release monthly releases. Yes. Right? So, again, like 
saying talking about the assets panel being a, not a, a story that's not done. You know, XD as a whole, we're we're constantly sort of yes. talking with designers and we're working on new features. And every month, we're launching new features. And we just launched some great new stuff that you and Glaren had been working on, yep. actually in the assets panel. Yep. All right. Tell tell us about that. What what did we just do? So when we launched the asset panel last year at yeah, Max, yeah. we focused on a couple of key workflows which allowed you to add content into your panel. Mm -hmm. The next step so was like, like like colors, like I have yes. my global colors, like yeah. I have my so adding styles. your character yep. styles, adding yep. symbols. Yep. And then we made it easy to sort of reuse that in your document. Yeah, so you could apply a color, them. you could yeah. drop a symbol. But the thing we learned over the last couple of months was yeah. once you add stuff to the panel, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what on the canvas maps to the panel or what in the panel maps to the canvas. Like, mm. if I'm looking mm -hmm. at a button, how do I know which color in my asset panel is it using yeah. when I have a lot of similar values? Yeah. Or which character style is this piece of text using? Yeah, um, yeah. Like like here, like this is actually one of my favorite yeah. examples like for the assets panel. So here in this, this is the wireframe UI kit called Wires. Mm -hmm. Publicly, everybody can go download this. It's really amazing. But what's really fun is to open up the assets panel yep. and start to tweak some of those global properties and like see exactly. them change. Yes. But I didn't know what was going to change unless visually I was connecting it or as I start changing, things start to update yeah. in real time. But I didn't I actually know like... Correct. Like, now with uh, color, know. this is very simple. Yeah, but very what, simple. What happens if you decided to pick maybe the third character style out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you decide to change it. Now it's hard to notice a change that that's so small out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can't figure out yeah, where on your artboard. Yeah. So to help you with some of these workflows, we focused on a couple of key areas, right? Uh, we started off with a basic search and filter on the top. Oh yeah, um, yeah there you go. Which is pretty fundamental yep. to managing your assets. Yep. But then also layering in a bit of other workflows like highlight on canvas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which allows you to simply right click right any click. element, yep. highlight that on canvas, so that gives you a cue on which specific elements are sort of using here those properties. Yeah. Um, you could do the same for colors, you could do it for character, uh, for symbols or mm -hmm. character styles. Yeah, let's go, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, why don't you try one of the symbols? Yeah, or maybe see. just pick the color. Oh yeah, that will highlight the color. Let's yeah. see, where is, where is so this So maybe take the purple used? or the pink that you have. Oh, there it is, so there, 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 is, there it is. Yeah. So it gives you a quick way of just mapping your yeah. content yeah. in your asset panel yep. uh, to your canvas. Yeah. So that you can make a call on you know which one is used where. Yeah, no, that's that's really helpful. Again, like it's something that I use mm -hmm. like all the time. Again, like in a in a really complex file. Again, like especially if it's not my file. Exactly. Right. Like that. That's a real key thing. Is that you know again like I work with Glaren all the time and Jonathan and everybody on the team. And sometimes when I open up Glaren's file, I'm kind of on like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. I don't want to wreck things. But I need to make you know maybe need to tweak some things in here. But yeah, this has been a really helpful thing. Speaking of Plus, which, there's been some cool things you've been doing with it. Yeah. Too. Speaking of which, how often do you open a file and find missing fonts in Mis that? <laughs> I love <laughs> I love your transition. This is when I talked to Glare and I think I talked to Jonathan earlier. Like this is one of the features that he, again something that like that Jonathan has figured out with the assets panel that yeah. I think has been super helpful. Yeah. So walk so, us through it. So this typically happens almost every day. Yeah. You know, you land up getting files from someone, or sometimes you know downloading UI kits. Once yep. you open them, you realize you're missing a bunch of fonts. Now, typically when it comes to resolving fonts, if you worked with Photoshop or Illustrator, you're familiar with the pop-up that is displayed where you resolve it using Typekit. Mm -hmm. With XD, we've taken a slightly different approach. Yeah. We've we've always focused on taking out friction mm -hmm. from your workflow. So we try to bring these as contextual as possible. So today I want to show you a really quick tip on how you can manage missing fonts yeah. uh, with XD and actually resolve them. This is really handy, especially, you know, we just launched the import features, right? Like, you know, you can take your Photoshop document, your sketch, sketch document, document, and convert yep. them into XD. Like this is the things, things are lost in translation there. Exactly. So this is a really handy way to, 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 to do that. All right, let's, let's see the, let's see this trick here. So here you've got a document open. You can yep. see I have a message at the bottom yep. that says one font is missing. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, show me the missing font. And here I have the name, so it's cast. Now I need yep. to figure out, the next step is actually, I want to figure out where it's used before I choose to replace yeah, it. Yeah, you're right? like, what is, yeah. Because yeah. um, you don't so, want it to break your design. Exactly. Much, yeah. Uh, 
and then once i actually figure out where it's used i want to replace it that's the next step so there, there are two yeah. pieces of that workflow and right now again because this is this is super early we we just have really uh still getting out xd off the ground with all these with all these features like we could have a much more robust font replacement we will system in we will in the, yes. in the future right but this is a really handy tip yeah on again using some of those new the new asset panel features, right? So now since I know the name of the font, yeah. but I don't know where it's coming from, yep. what I do is I select my entire artboard, mm -hmm. all the artboards in my document. I go ahead and I click on the plus button in the assets panel. You can see now this document, it's extracted every single font used inside. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this, it converts each of them into a character, character style. style. So here I can clearly see that it's pulled out four character styles which are using the same font mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was marked as, as missing. missing. Yep. So the tooltip lets me know that this has a missing, missing font. font out there. Mm -hmm. um, now the next step is I want to go ahead and correct this font. Yep. But before that, I want to make sure I know where this font is used. So now going back to the feature we yep. just spoke yep. about, yep. I can simply right click and say highlight on canvas. And you can see how it highlighted the two elements yep. that are actually using this. So now I've actually got all the information I require. I know the font's missing. I know which where character style. I know where yep. it's used. Yep. The last step of the entire process, yep. actually fixing this, right? Yep. Again, continuing the same workflow on the asset panel, I can simply right click, say yeah. edit, go to this pop-up, pick another font, and there you go. There you go. You've actually replaced that, and you can see that it's moved into another moved character into new, style yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. You've um, resolved that problem. So in one simple click, you've managed to you know res find yeah. out which is the missing font, find out where it's being used, and then easily replace that yep. from the asset panel. Yeah. I think it's great. I mean, I think that again, like in the future, I think you know you could imagine like in something I know we're actually working on, which yep. is TypeKit integration. Like there could be a much more magical sort of future where like you open it up and we show you what's missing and we just give you the option to just replace it with something from TypeKit, yeah. or we actually auto load it, yep. like. Who's maybe you're never missing fonts ever again? Yes, that would be amazing. And another, another. But it's gonna take us a while to get there, you know. Yeah. So yeah, these are these are really handy like features to be to use in the in the interim. So. And another yeah. similar one yeah. was when you have really similar values. Oh yeah. So you notice how I have like two very similar shades of pink. Mauvey, pinky, yeah. I'm not yeah. really sure yeah. what's going on here and where it's used. So I'm gonna go back to that same feature out here, right click and say highlight, and you notice how there are about four buttons that use this. But the other ones don't. But the other ones don't. They use the other one. Um, now I'm not sure what the other ones use, so I can actually select that, right click, say reveal color and assets. And you oh, notice we even highlighted the there reverse way. Look at that. So what I basically realized is now, out of all these eight buttons, I'm using a mix of two values. Yep. Now if I want to resolve this, the easiest way to do that is I pick the color I want. Yep. So in this case, I want I want the second yeah, swatch. Yep, yep. I right click, I say copy hex. Mm -hmm. I go to back to the first swatch, which is the incorrect value. Right click, say edit. And I just simply paste the new swatch and I hit enter. And you notice when I do that, it merges the two swatches. Yep. And now if I say highlight, all the buttons have the same value in it. Yep. So again, a really simple trick inside the asset panel to manage missing fonts and to resolve uh, Character styles or mm -hmm. colors that mm -hmm. are sort of duplicates of very close values. Yeah, no, that's that's really that's really handy. Plus, I like again that like it's finding ways to work kind of within what the tool can do now. Yeah. Again, like we're we're actually learning and actually figuring out workflows, and these might influence how we fix them in yes. the future. You know, so hey, look, there's Mike Chambers, Mr. Mike Chambers himself, uh, <laughs> joining the chat. Hey, Mike. Hey, Anita. Hey, everybody. Uh, if you guys have any questions for us, let us know. I saw a few questions, and Matthias, of course. He can answer them. Glaren, if Glaren's still around, you can ask him a question in chat. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, come join us on Behance, and you can chat with us. Say hi. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, let's see. That That's a really, I think, again, like, what's cool about XD and its constant evolution is that we're, again, we're exposing maybe, again, problems maybe we haven't even thought about before. Yes. Uh, as we're using the tool and we're, you know, listening to designers and we're just feeding that all right back into yep. development of XD. So what this might not feel like like this is kind of like my my tip and mainly because I love this feature and I I think that we as designers maybe even underutilize its potential yeah. but I love the repeat grid 
And everybody in the chat, have you used the repeat grid? Do you also know and love the repeat grid? Jonathan, I know you are a huge extensive user yes. of the repeat grid feature. Um, but when I go out there and I talk to designers, it turns out not a lot of people understand what it, what it can be good for. They haven't quite figured out a way to to work it into their workflows, mm -hmm. you know? And I know that's with any new feature, you know, any new feature in any application that you, that you use all the time or application you come to and you don't know much about. Sometimes again, it's hard to figure out, like, how do I how do I best use that to make me a better designer or make me a faster designer, you know? So uh, this is still, I said, I never get tired of the repeat grid uh, and I will show it, you know, all day long. Um, oh, I am actually gonna show just real quick just how I like to use the repeat grid. Um, so we're gonna make uh, just a new. I love that gradient dump. wallpaper. I know gradients, man. They're so hot. <laughs> I'm gonna move over back over here. All right. Okay. So uh, again, the the real thing that actually what we wanted to do when we were designing the repeat grid is we wanted to basically allow you to design something like a, like the Twitter app or like a contact list or that list that Jonathan had in his app in like in like minutes, right? So, you know, I'm basically, you know, gonna draw maybe like a little app to like for, maybe I need a contact list in my app. So I'm going to um, design this really quickly and we're not gonna put any thought into it, but I just wanna start getting the pieces up and going, right? So can, before, now if I was gonna make this into a list, right, in Illustrator or in InDesign or in any of the other apps, I would just, you know, copy and paste and I would copy and paste, and then I would have to drag in the images and mask each one individually, and then I'd have to, you know, maybe start creating some styles. Instead, what I can do is just now go to the repeat grid, convert that element into this special group that now has these new handles, and now as I drag, right, it just creates that list automatically. And then if I go in, of course, I change anything about that, it's gonna change in all of them. Really handy, really easy I think easy that's way. one of the most powerful features oh of the gosh. repeat grid. That the relationship that it keeps or binds between different elements. Mm -hmm. um, because honestly, duplicating stuff is not that difficult. We've got yeah. some of the best, you know, snapping, that position snapping, guides. Snapping, distribution. But where it really breaks is when you got to reposition stuff or mm -hmm. got to add more spacing or you got to like change the position of one specific element <laughs> across a list of, you know, 50 plus yeah. uh, things. Change the style, right? Like, like any of these things. Add new elements in here. Yep. Like this, everything just stays in sync. Yeah. So right? it's 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 a lot more than just simply duplicating stuff. Yeah. It's actually about being able to put together a relationship between objects that you can then use to edit specific properties, like its position, its mm -hmm. spacing, its style, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. it just allows me to work really quickly. And then of course the other piece of it is as you know, as you're working here. The, the style stays synced up in the layout, but the content stays unique to yes. each each item, yes. right? So I could come in here and I could start typing my friends' names, right, like this, and they all stay different. But if I go and I, of course, change the style, again, they all, they're all gonna stay linked up. So, you know, I don't know why I'm using Comic Sans, but there you are. <laughs> uh, but, but this is, but things really take off, I think, and really start to again make my workflow faster and more streamlined is drag and drop, yes. right? Is to be able to, again, rather than you know dragging in each of these images separately and masking them, right, of my friends. Oh, this is I'm doing this thing. So right, I'd have to drag each of these in and then I have to position them and then mask them individually. Instead, what I can do is just take a folder of images from my desktop. Yep. And just drag and drop them Wait into my repeat grid. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ah, I mean, it's so. I think cool. one of the other things I still, that I still can't get over it. <laughs> one of the other things that I feel like designers miss out is the fact that you can resize the repeat grid in any direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just vertical, but you could mm -hmm. go horizontally. So imagine being able to create really flexible grids with this. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when we didn't have support for layout grids. Oh, this was the yeah. easiest way to create a quick grid on top of your web page and then use that to align stuff. I'm gonna we're gonna talk about Dansky oh, okay. in just yes. a minute. Uh, yes, because because there were again like he, I love that again people like ourselves and the community look at XD and, and where it is and they find mm -hmm. like really amazing things to do with it to, yes. to solve their problems and sort of meet their needs. Again, even sometimes 
that might say that we're missing a feature, but it actually might say that maybe they come up with a new way of working in it yep. that might lead us to a new path or a new feature. So, and of course you can do this with, with images, but you can also do it with text, which I thought was, was a huge upgrade cool to like this that. as well, mm -hmm. is I have all my friends' names. So now rather than having to go through and type each one individually, now I'll just drag and drop those, you know, right on to the... And as a designer, this is so simple to like put your content mm -hmm. into a text file and not have to worry about formats like JSON or yeah. like Excel sheets. Like it's a simple text file that you can simply drag and drop and it'll what? select the repeat grid. You've not selected it. Oh so... well, no, what happened? Let me see, did I, is this not, is this, did I not save this as the right? <laughs> Here I am, like, all right, well, wait, did I not save this as a, which is a basic text file? I don't know what's going on. Oh, you, do you, where's the text file? Right there. Ah, well, Oh, okay. it doesn't have the .txt yep, extension. Yeah, it doesn't, has the, so that's what So let's add that in sorry. there. Ah, oh, sorry, this is total, like, I was totally, like. And I was saying it's not hard for designers I to create know. a text file, but. Oh, no. Know. All right, so clearly right, talent doesn't know how to create it. a text file. <laughs> I know. Oh, jeez. All right, all right. Um, all right, we'll move on from there. But yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things we're gonna talk about here in a second is uh, like just the the way in which again the community sort of like mm -hmm. adopts a tool and then just find really cool new ways of working and they become this really amazing resource. Yes. Um, but I thought here we could take a pause and maybe see if there's any um, many questions, questions here in the chat. Um, so if you got one from Kevin. Yeah. They get design responsive prototypes in NXT. Hmm. So when you test the layout, so so Kevin's thinking when I have I'm designing a, a web page. I'm thinking here, Kevin, is that is that what you're asking? Let us know. That that when I preview in the browser, it can actually I can actually author and then preview the responsive mm -hmm. behavior. Something think, you've been thinking about? That's definitely an yeah. area we've been thinking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. responsive from multiple different ways. One is on the authoring side, so yep. how do you design yeah, responsive artboards? Yep. Um, and then to Kevin's point, how do you tie that back to being able to preview it, right? Yep. Uh, could we do something smart around the way? You know, we yep. help you preview that. Yep. Um, or maybe if we know that it's a web mm -hmm. design, yeah. like the design is for the web, and rather then, than like an app design for like, say like an iPhone. Correct. Yep. And then the other angle to responsive is also thinking about how you scale your design from an iPhone to an iPad. So it's not really web specific use yeah. cases, but we're also looking at, you know, different use cases where you're going from different devices. Yeah. Um, so you have responsive components that exactly. scale across those yes. different sizes. So yeah. looking at all the mediums, the whole end of the spectrum, uh, yeah. the team is definitely focused a lot on, you know, making sure we build the right pieces yeah. of uh, foundational work to get responsive design into yep. XT. Yep. Let's see, Matthias, there was a question from YouTube uh, chat which if you're on YouTube, come over and be hands. Then, then Jonathan and I can see your question. Uh, so come join, come over to be hands. It's great. Uh, <laughs> there's a slogan right there. Be hands. It's great. Um, so, uh, oh, a shortcut. The question was from Honoraj in YouTube, which was waiting for a shortcut for picking the for the color picker. A shortcut. So if I have something selected, mm -hmm. rather than having to go click on that color picker, actually having a shortcut. Yep. Yep. That's definitely again something. Sometimes when you look at some of these requests, you wonder why it takes so long for mm -hmm. the XT team mm -hmm. to deliver. Uh, it's not that it's difficult, but you know there are things like this that we sort of choose to prioritize. For example, we know there are several keyboard shortcuts that you all have requested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we also have a goal of making sure the app is lightweight yeah. Uh, yeah. and you don't have to learn new shortcuts. Uh, we don't. The fact that we've actually shipped so far without a preference dialog. It's pretty awesome. Um, goes to say we try and pick the best defaults the and the best, best shortcuts, defaults. right? Yep. Um, so not that I'm not saying that we won't have this shortcut, but we definitely are prioritizing mm -hmm. that against a we're, lot of other key features. thinking about that, for sure, yeah. for sure. And you know, Jonathan is a product manager. You know, he has a big hand in setting those priorities. So if you uh, you wanted to bribe him, I'm sure. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> That's not how we work. We're really thinking about like, and really prioritizing some of the, some of the key, and fixing some of the key problems that designers <laughs> have in their workflows today. Uh, Kevin had another question. Um, uh, prototype Adobe Portfolio with XD. Hmm. So, ooh, that's that's pretty interesting, uh, Kevin. Like, sort of a connection, a little synergy across the different, uh, the Adobe properties. Hmm. So, hmm. I know we do support embedding. We do, um, we do support embedding. A prototype from yeah. XD onto Behance. Yep. 
I'm guessing it should work for portfolio, but I'm we should probably check we should that. Ch we should check that. We, should check we double that. check that. We like that. Um, but you know, Kevin, so being able to like author your portfolio from XD, I mean, that's mm. pretty interesting. I think you know, Kevin, you you definitely are, are hinting at features that really support, um, you know, like building a web page yes. inside of XD, which yeah, you never know. I mean, with definitely a lot of different ways uh, that we could go. Um, if you guys have a suggestion you want to see us sort of look at. You can also, of course, hit us up directly here or on Twitter. But mm -hmm. also, we have a user voice forum. It's at uh, wxd.uservoice.com, and you can actually go and suggest features for that you would like to see in XD, and yep. or you can vote on other features um, from the community there as well. So you guys go check that out. Um, so this, I actually wanted to include this again because we were we had a bit of a tips and tricks session, but it also got me thinking about you know maybe talking a little bit more about the history um, here on the screen. I'm actually showing the first app icon for Adobe XD when it was called Project Sparkler. <laughs> that was actually our very first name that we uh, we were sort of known as internally as we were building mm -hmm. our prototype and really getting out there and and figuring out what what XD was going to be when it was going to when it grew up. Uh, but yeah, Project Sparkler. Do you know what uh, Do you know what that's an homage to, uh, no. Jonathan? Oh. Actually, I joined the team much later. Much so later. No. Do you know? Do, Anyone else? Uh, can anyone else guess what uh, what was our inspiration in calling XD Project Sparkler back in the day? If you do know, I'll try my best to get you a pair of socks. If you can, if you can know <laughs> what the inspiration was, I'll I'll, I'll cool. tell you. I'll tell everyone back a late a little later in the stream. So, um, yeah. Let's see. There's some other questions here while we're here. Let's see. Um, this is Scott had a question on why. Can you explain why version control got shelved? Yep. Um, so that's an interesting one. I think with XD, we set a bunch of core principles that we yep. follow very strictly. And those principles tie to facts around our quality, quality. our performance, performance. Uh, the overall experience, yep. the onboarding. So every time we build a new feature, we make sure that the feature meets those yep. quality yep. bars, meets those performance goals. Exactly. Uh, Simplistic onboarding, all of those are a part of the end-to-end -end yeah. experience. Because we know it's valuable. Like your time is valuable. If yeah. you, we launched a feature that didn't meet any of those cr those criteria, it would be a bad experience and it would slow you down from working and yeah. it would actually hinder you getting work done. Now with version control, that was when we started off the version control work. We had an experience that we put together. We built it out. We prototyped it. We had a good idea for. What we it did a be. whole bunch of user. We did a lot of user study. Yeah, we did a lot of yeah. user study with that. And what we realized was, it was a part of the product that still didn't meet specific. Yeah, it just wasn't um, quite there yet. You know, specific goals yeah. around our quality and our performance. So. But but that all being said, and we're still actually actively working yes. on that. So we are again like to John's point, like we we hold ourselves to a really high standard yes. because we know how valuable your time is as, as a designer Absolutely. out there in the world. Like you need to get work done. Yes. So again, we just want to ensure that everything that goes into the app. Is, it, is is sort of held to that, that high quality bar. Yeah, so don't think of it as shelf. Think yeah. of it more as, you know, we built something, we're trying to improve it's it and make ready. it the best in class. Yeah. So yeah. so so still still on its way there, Scott. Uh, Anita, uh, I mean, this is a very relevant question. Uh, you know, will XD be shelved in a similar mm -hmm. way to DPS and Muse? And it's, and I, you know, I can, well, I mean, who knows what the future holds, but again, like, XD is the future of design tooling yep. at Adobe, and we are, again, our, our real focus as a team has been building a strong foundation, uh, a new platform that can really grow and adapt to changing the changing design landscape. Right, that was really why we went out to become uh, become a thing, just make yep. it out there. And um, you know, we we reached our 1.0. That and was a big we, milestone, for huge us. milestone, yeah. and but and we continued to ship and release monthly uh, monthly releases. Uh, I think the future is pretty bright. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely see us here for the long run. Yeah. Um, and we are going. This is not going anywhere. Yep. Um, yep. We are going to be here. We're definitely going to be solving a lot of more uh, complex user experience yep. problems. Um, I'm going to so have yeah. Jonathan back on one day when he can actually share some of the things that he's been working on <laughs> with Alex Paterik, our senior designer, yes. on that front as well on the prototyping side. So stay tuned. Um, Yes, so actually, Matthias is just pointing out kind of my next segue, which I really wanted to call out and really highlight both the XD team and also the community sort of out there and available. Um, 
So let me go here. So first off, everyone should go follow Elaine Chow on ex on uh, Twitter. Uh, every day, pretty much every day, she's yep. she's she's posting an Adobe XD Pro tip. She's giving you again these little tips and tricks on how to best how to make the make the best out of XD and highlighting really amazing features. Actually, this is one of my favorite ones because of just how it actually functions. Again, we all kind of know the Pathfinder tool. You yes. know, it's something that we know and love from from Photoshop and Illustrator. But the the Pathfinder tool in XD is pretty special. Yes. So rather than being destructive, it's actually almost like a toggle. You can actually just sort of play with your design and toggle the different states of the Pathfinder, whether mm -hmm. it's sort of you know union or subtraction, and the shape remembers and actually sort of is packaged up, and you can actually sort of just toggle through all those modes. So mm -hmm. you guys should all go all go follow Elaine to learn some great tricks uh, and tips for using XD. Uh, also, again, like people are out there, again like. Like we can just just find it, figuring out yep. cool ways to, to use XD. This is a uh, Pranava Tandra, um, and she uh, put together this really great sort of post on Medium about how to make uh, rounded end caps again because it's a feature that we're working very hard on. That's not, impressive. Not yet, not yet in XD. This is this is deep. You guys should definitely check this out. Um, <laughs> there's a person named Jen Berg in the page who knows what Sparkler is an homage to, but. The secret is she has the inside track. Uh. <laughs> Jen Berg is actually my wife. <laughs> so she, if there's anyone who knows uh, the most about XD that's not from Adobe, <laughs> it would be Jen. She's she's the next best on that one. So uh, I'm just going to get her some socks anyways. So, <laughs> um, so one of my other favorites out there is, uh, is actually Dansky. Mm -hmm. um, you guys should oh, all yeah, go Dansky. follow him on Twitter and on YouTube. Dan is posting amazing, amazing tutorials on not just XD, but that's my favorite part is XD. Uh, and on kind of doing really cool th you know, things that he's doing with XD. This one uh, that I loved was uh, quickly sort of present a sort of contact sheet of images uh, you know, in XD. So you guys should all go check out uh, Dansky as well. Again, like this is really how like tools grow, right? Like it's this fee it's getting this feedback from the community. So the community, like we're building XD so that everyone out there can go and make, um, you know, just do amazing work, mm -hmm. and that's what we love seeing. And through doing that, again, we all kind of grow and we all sort of learn together. Yes. And again, like the work that the community is doing, the uh, things that we're paying attention to, that we're using to actually build XD, maybe make XD better. Um, again, you know, Dan, that trick with the layout grid with repeat using repeat grid, yep. that's huge. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, so uh, did anyone, anyone in the in other than my wife, <laughs> uh, <laughs> know what the homage uh, that's the Project Sparkler, our very first name was to? Jonathan, did you did you think about it? Did you figure it out? Still trying to think. Well, when I first joined Adobe, everybody on the design team used a tool that I was not very familiar with. Oh, I see where this um, is going. And it was something that that I ended up sort of like, just like, I felt like I just loved the, that tool mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. And no one really understood like its power, its potential. Uh, so it was another tool, uh, here, if you can get it in quickly, uh, that was in the Adobe Creative Suite. Oh, oh Scott, got, Scott it. got it. Scott got it. <laughs> Scott got it. You did it, Scott, in the <laughs> chat. Scott, hit me up on Twitter. I'm gonna figure out a way to get you some socks, man. Um, fireworks, yes. yes. Sparkler was an homage to Fireworks, a tool that was very influential to all of our early ideas, yep. building Adobe XD. Um, there's a funny story about Spark and Sparkler <laughs> uh, that I'll tell another time. But uh, Jonathan, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, this, this was awesome. Was amazing. I'm glad we did this. Yeah. I really just like sharing a lot of the ways in which I mean, you're doing amazing work in XD as well as, as part of the XD yeah. team. And seeing how you use it inspires me on a daily basis. Seeing how the community uses XD mm -hmm. inspires me mm -hmm. and really, uh, I think, really drives the whole team to come up yeah. with really new, great, and amazing features. So thank you all. Um, if you want to, you know, of course, this is show is going to be archived on, archived on YouTube. So go check it out if you missed it, uh, if you came in late. Um, and we're going to be back, uh, not next week, because we'll be off uh, the 99U next week. Yes. So the team will be in New York. Um, but join us on the 18th, and we'll be back with another exciting topic, another highlighting how we, uh, we build and design yep. Adobe XD. Awesome. So thanks, everyone.